Godzilla has a series of comics. It's a series of miniseries telling varying stories about Godzilla. The current one is Godzilla War for Humanity. We're a comic story and we make audio dramas of your favorite comic books so that you know what's going on and what exists. If you want more other publishers like this IDW Godzilla, consider supporting us on our Patreon. Yuko Honda and her friend Megumi were lost in the woods in Japan. They wandered for hours, with Yuko sure that they would eventually find their way home. That was the first day she saw a kaiju. It was the creature known as Adora. The two young girls watched as the kaiju leaned over the mountain and began to tear out the trees and rocks until it could get to the lava within. Hedora wanted the smoke that billowed out of that mountain, uncaring how the lava would flow and destroy all. The two young girls ran in terror as the lava came rolling after them, but they were not alone. A massive foot suddenly came down and protected them from the lava. They both looked up at the great Godzilla, who had become a sort of protector of mankind. Godzilla stomped forward and fought against Hedora knocking him away from the mountain, hitting him with an atomic blast that knocked it back into the ocean. Finally safe, the two girls followed the train tracks back to their village. But while Megumi's family was grateful that she was unharmed from the kaiju fight, Yoko's mother didn't show her any love at all. Ah, I knew you'd turn up sooner or later, was all she said, unaware of her daughter's tears. Now we go to present day, San Francisco. Dr. Yuko Honda is now the leader in her field of kaiju studies. She stands backstage at a lecture, arguing with her mother, who doesn't want to take care of her 15-year-old granddaughter. Mom, can we please just talk about this later? I'm about to give a lecture. Yuko hisses, promising her mother that her grandmother isn't a demon. Finally, Yuko is called on stage and hangs up on her mother. Before the gathered crowd, she tells the story of her first meeting with Godzilla, leaving out the mother issues, of course. After Megumi and I found our way home, the monsters would continue to fight for another three days along the shoreline. In the end, the battle would cause only $2.3 million in damage, a fraction of what an average kaiju encounter causes. Yuko explains, looking out on the crowd. Now imagine what would happen if Godzilla hadn't been there to stop Hedorah from making landfall. Godzilla didn't just save my life that day, he saved all of our lives, she says. But someone in the crowd disagrees. Fazan Fulchek stands up, ignoring the fact that he spills his popcorn on the person sitting in front of him. He loudly informs the crowd that Godzilla has caused just as much destruction as any other kaiju. Fazan Fulchek, everyone! Tech billionaire and perpetual thorn in my side. Yuko says angrily, but Fazan isn't listening. He brings up his phone and he hacks into the lecture's feed. Shows the video that he has on him. Doctor, I'd like to get your opinion on a few things, including this, he says. The crowd then watches as a kaiju known as Gorosaurus walks along its normal migration route, not causing any trouble, but something comes out of the ground. A new kaiju that no one has seen. The creature grabs Gorosaurus, throwing it to the ground. Tentacles wrap around it, and the new kaiju spews a black liquid on its face. With this done, the new kaiju retreats back into the earth. But this isn't the only monster that it attacked. The new kaiju appeared elsewhere in the world and attacked Amanda in the same way. After the lecture, Yuko and Fazan talk backstage. Stranger still, after Gorosaurus and Amanda recovered, they changed their patterns and went into a rampage, destroying the closest populated areas. Yuko is fascinated by the videos on Fazan's phone. This is incredible. Where did it come from? Is it a plant? Is it an animal? I'm so excited, she tells Fazan, who smiles, telling her that he was sent to recruit her, that they were hoping that she could answer some of those very questions. Who's us? Because I'm not working for you, she says in disbelief. Shortly after, Yuko finds herself in a military headquarters in a secret location. She's introduced to the team, which is led by Colonel Elise Guerrero. Their mission is to stop this new kaiju's attack. Fazan Fulchek is providing the tech, while Johnny Wiggum is an expert biologist and neuroscientist. Colonel Guerrero taps a few buttons and the holographic image of the new kaiju appears. This is our target, codename Zuspora. 
If you don't like the name, blame Dr. Wiggum. He came up with it. She then looks to the team for ideas on how to stop Zoospora. Fazan smiles, and he brings up his own image of a massive mech. Magura, Mobile Operation Godzilla Universal Expert Robot Aerotype, he says with pride, explaining that his company has built the weapon to protect cities from the terror of Godzilla and other kaiju. But Yuko shakes her head. Godzilla is not a terror. Godzilla is the best chance we have at stopping Zoospora. In fact, it's probably already on its way here, she says. The two then begin to argue until Colonel Guerrero orders them to sit down. She looks to Dr. Wiggum for ideas, and he points out that it seems to be some sort of fungal-based creature. Great, it's a mushroom, so how do we kill it? The colonel says. Dr. Wiggum thinks about it for a moment before shrugging. Fire? He says as a question. The colonel nods and tells Fazan that they're going with the Magera option. She turns to leave the command center. She orders Dr. Wiggum to get Yuko up to speed. What is she talking about? Yuko asks. Dr. Wiggum motions her over to one of their computer consoles and explains that Godzilla isn't coming. That they're tracking him on Monster Island. With Manila, he says. On the island, Godzilla is actually circling, protecting its offspring. Manila is playing and wanders towards the shore, but the massive crab kaiju rises out of the ocean. Manila screams in terror as it's lifted off of the ground, but Godzilla is there, biting into the crab's arm, tearing it off. I hate to break it to you, but Godzilla isn't coming to save us this time. In Madagascar, the kaiju known as Ungurius walks along its normal migration route. While the International Department of Kaiju Migration does its job to make sure the massive creature doesn't deviate. As Ungarius walks into the ocean, the new kaiju known as Zoospora rises up out of the earth, its massive vines stretching out and grabbing a hold of Ungarius, forcing the kaiju to roll into a ball, using its spikes to cut through Zoospora's vines. Back at the base, Barry the Analysis turns away from his monitors, warning the rest of the team that Zoospora has been spotted and it's attacking another kaiju. Mr. Fulchek, put it into action! Colonel Guerrero orders as he turns to Faison. The tech billionaire smiles, grabbing a hold of his radio. Yes! I've been dying to do this! He shouts and then he yells into the radio, ordering Magera Power Team Alpha to their power stations. The team, clad in identical pilot suits, rush down the corridors while doing their action poses. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, Johnny Wiggum and Yuko Honda pull up to the airport, allowing Yuko's daughter to jump into the van. Hey, honey, how was grandma's? Yuko asks her daughter. The young girl glares at her. She made fun of the way I eat peas. It's so specific. Don't ever make me go back there again, Samantha snaps. But Wiggum gets an alert from his watch, warning Yuko the Zoospora is attacking again, and Mogera is deployed to fight it. Samantha leans into the front seat, staring at the scientist. Sorry, who's this guy in what's a Mogera? She asks. But back in Madagascar, the two kaiju continue to fight, with Angaris biting down on Zoospora's vine-like arms, tearing them off. But Zoospora quickly heals, grabbing a hold of Angaris, vomiting black bile into the mighty kaiju's mouth, bringing him down. As Yuko points the van back towards the base, the group is stuck in traffic. Yuko glances at her daughter in the mirror, explaining that Mogera is a mechanized weapon. Owned by a billionaire man-child, Faison Fulchek, she grumbles. Samantha just sighs, telling her mother to get a room with her rival already. What we need is Godzilla! I wish I could just talk to Godzilla! Yuko says to Wiggum, explaining that she thinks that she could convince the giant kaiju to help them. Wiggum has an idea. He brings up the internet on his hollow watch, telling the pair about a story where somebody supposedly found a cave in Mongolia where there was a blob creature that could communicate with the kaiju. Yuko nods, spinning the van into the nearest parking lot. New plan! We're going to Mongolia to commune with the monsters! Wiggum, set it up! Get in touch with anyone about that story to see if there's even a shred of truth to it, she says. Back in Madagascar, Power Team Alpha has arrived with Mogera, assembling the giant mecha and opening fire on Zoospora. But before the blast can power up, Ungaris, now crazed by Zoospora's bile, rushes at the mecha, slamming it into the ground. 
Ungaris roars, vomiting up his own bile on the mech. The black sludge leaking into the cockpit and Power Team Alpha screaming in panic. Later, Yuko and Wiggum and Samantha land in Mongolia. Wiggum explains that he got in touch with Seymour Finnegan, who covered the story in Mongolia, and the reporter hooked them up with a rental vehicle and a guide to help them get to the cave. As they all climb in, Samantha brings the news up on her phone. Zeus Spora poisoned Ungaris, and then they both took out Mogera together, and then Team Alpha attacked Fulchek and Guerrero. Samantha tells him as she goes through her mother's emails. Wait, what? Yuko says in exasperation. Oh, and Ungaris is stomping on a city in Madagascar. Samantha continues. The van bumps through the mountain passes until the guide leads them to a cave. He waits outside with a campfire while the trio head inside. In the darkness of the cave, Yuko holds up her lantern, and the three stare in surprise at the strange blob-like creature that is clinging to the walls. They can hear it mumbling, and its eyes seem to be closed. Just talk to it? Yuko asks as she glances at Wiggum. But he only shrugs his shoulders. Yuko sighs, turning back to the strange creature. My friend says that you commune with the kaiju. I want to talk to Godzilla. The blob suddenly opens up its strange eyes and stares at her. You have a question in your heart, Yuko Honda. Ask it, the blob mumbles. After getting over her surprise at the blob's voice, she finally nods. Please ask Godzilla, why does it not save us, the humans, from Zoospora and the raging kaiju? The blob shifts and explains that Zoospora is a natural defense of the Earth against the human population, which is growing too large and killing off the Earth. Zoospora is the Earth's check against mankind. Godzilla understands this and is allowing Zoospora to do what it's naturally supposed to do. Hearing these words, Yuko is overcome with emotion and rushes out of the cave, with Wiggum and Samantha following close behind. Mom! Are you okay? Samantha asks with concern. Yuko nods, telling them that she just needs a moment to think. And then suddenly there's a light in the forest and two women appear in front of Yuko. Dr. Honda should not trust so easily. The cave is not the only one who communes with the kaiju. The Mothra twins tell her. Mothra says that Godzilla stays on Monster Island to protect Manila from Zoospora. Not because Godzilla wants humans destroyed. The woman says, promising that Mothra will help bring Godzilla to the mainland to fight against Zoospora. Back on Monster Island, Mothra swoops down, hitting Godzilla with an energy blast from her antenna. Godzilla roars in anger as Mothra grabs him by the tail and drags him into the ocean. But Godzilla hits her with the atomic blast, chasing her away, leaving it and Manila standing alone on the beach. It's the current ongoing miniseries of Godzilla, and if you want more, let me know in the comments down below, because this story is to be continued.